Hello, good morning everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining um, our webinar today. Uh, we really value your time and appreciate uh, that you joined uh, the call. Um, this is going to be a short um, introduction to why I see um, technologies and the products that we have. Um, Yoram Shimoni will join the call later on just to give you um, an insight into how our tools can actually uh, benefit your company and how you can move forward to market much quicker. Um, so this is us. Uh, we are YIC uh, Technologies. Um, we specialize in EMC pre-compliance solutions. And what we do is we identify EMC, EMI issues with real-time scanning techniques. Um, so we are leading developer um, of the high resolution, high speed and near field diagnostics tool. Um, so what we aim to do is give you a good way and insight to look at your PCB or your antennas or products um, to see where your challenges are and how to mitigate those so you will pass your EMC certification. So YIC has two product lines. Uh, the first one is the EMC line, the EM product line. Um, and this is what we will be focusing on today during this webinar. Um, but we also have another very interesting product line, which is the RF product line. Um, and this is an antenna tester and characterization tool. Um, it's a very similar look and feel to our EM product line, um, but the difference uh, it measures different um, uh, phases of of the uh, emissions and also it can predict the the far field so what we are very passionate about EMC certification and this is the value that YIC would bring to you as a customer. So we want to accelerate your time to market. So if you've got a product that you need to certify EMC certification, then we want to help you with the lowest cost possible to get that product to market. And this is what we are dedicated to. Um, we want to save costs, we want to increase your productivity, and we want to accelerate the time to market. And this is the value that we bring as a company um, to the EMC market. Now, just very briefly, before I um, hand over to Yoram, um, these are the different products that we have in our product line. So the EM scanner is the, um, the entry-level product, so it's a flat scanner board. Um, we work with external spectrum analyzers. The resolution of this one is 7.5 millimeters, and the scanning surface is about the size of an A4. Um, and the use case for this one is PCBs and complete products. The EM Scanner R is our high resolution scanner. Um, this is, is usually done in aerospace and defense, medical. Um, and the use case for this one is chips and high density PCBs. Um, the resolution is up until 0 0.06 millimeter. So very high resolution scanner that you can get on that. Uh, our EM probe solution is a single probe robotic arm. Um, the one we are showing here is a desktop model. Um, we see it as, um, uh, as a project because uh, the robotic arm can be scalable. Um, so it doesn't matter the size of your DUT. Um, we will find a robotic arm um, in our product range that is suitable um, for your um, use case. There's no right and wrong to these. Um, the robotic arm it comes into play when you have higher components um, so that the probe will follow the topology of uh, the DUT. Then we've got a handout probes, the near field probe kit. Um, this is a, a product that's designed uh, by us. Um, 
so that you can actually track the probe in live tracking with the camera. And this is also one of the products that Euron will show you today and how it's working. Um, all our products, our EMC products, works with, off the same software, which is the EM Viewer 2.1. Um, and um, if you have a spectrum analyzer in your lab, um, we would be able to add that so that you can use that uh, with a EM Viewer 2.0. Um, the RF scanner is the antenna tester that I measured. So as you can see, it's very similar to the EM scanner look and feel, but the use case is completely different. So this is to test and characterize antennas, and it will show you exactly how the antenna behaves in the far field. Um, so this is just a quick overview of the products. If you need more information, please come through to us and, and we will help you. But at this point, I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to hand you over to Yoram, who will show you a live online demonstration and will also go through the characteristics on how to troubleshoot some of your EMC um, challenges. So Yoram, at this point, I'll hand over to you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Cornell. Uh, hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Right. So welcome to the technical session. Um, here we have a demo board. I will explain a bit about that uh, demo board. We will see an actual chamber measurements of that board. We will follow the problem and we will understand how to hunt them down and fix them. Uh, please feel free to stop me, ask questions. Let's have a, an open discussion. Uh, about the the methods that I'm actually uh, uh, using here. I will use our uh, handheld probes and high resolution scanner. They are both uh, here. So let's start. So this is the board that I'm going to use. Uh, this board was developed by Professor Arturo Mediano. And the idea here is to show how a live, a real, RFID system uh, works and the problems that that system can cause for EMC uh, EMI. Uh, essentially, the setup, this is the schematics uh, of the block, so the setup is very simple. Let me turn on my uh, pointer options here. Uh, so essentially, uh, we power the board uh, by two options, either a, a wall socket, which goes to DC to DC converter, or by uh, battery options, five volts. I'm using here a, a USB a cable and connector connected to essentially a, a battery operated device. Uh, then we have the main board, which runs on a 32 megahertz clock. Uh, that goes through a cable that runs an SPI a communication bus to the RFID circuits run at 13 uh, gigahertz. I'm sorry, megahertz. So we will see everything on the um, on the scanner, and we will see the real chamber results of that board, the problems, and how to fix them. There's another circuit here, circuit number three, which just come to emphasize the importance of current return loop. Uh, I don't think we will get to that in this presentation. Uh, it's also available on our uh, EDU kit. Uh, let's focus on the actual live uh, RFID uh, board. So uh, this is uh, the block layout of the board itself. This is actually what, what I have here. Uh, here it's the DC to DC converter, and this is the wall socket from here. Uh, so the power will go through this block and will be converted. And uh, uh, this is here is the main processor, uh, as I mentioned, the 32 uh, megahertz, the ribbon cable with the SPI communication, and this is the and the RFID uh, section. So I have that on the uh, scanner itself, and you connect everything, you take that to, to the chamber, and then usually you will get something like this. And that's, I assume this is not a good result, right? So the first thing that you will do to try to understand and mitigate the problem is to take a handheld probe and sniff around. So let's do that. Let me switch to. 
into the software here. So let's define a new uh, project here. And let's go to live tracking, select the camera. And of course, you can see the board itself. Everything is alive. Uh, this is the power, this area here. Uh, I'm just focusing on that area because we saw the majority of the problem around 120 uh, megahertz, and this is actually the DC to DC converter. So let's set the frequencies here. 200 uh, RBW is OK, and let's just set the attenuation to 10 here because we are getting high, high levels. OK, run, and this is what you see. So first of all, you will quickly, quickly do some kind of a really nice and quick scan, and you already see the mountain very similar to the chamber results. Actually, fairly quick, we, uh, quickly, uh, we can identify that that is the area of issue. So this is actually the coil, and all the circuits of the DC converter, DC to DC converter is, is around that area. So you can see here that it's fairly quiet. Uh, <clears throat> the 32 uh, megahertz area is also active. We can see the signals pop up right here. But essentially, the majority of the problems are coming from that area. So again, this is very uh, easy to uh, to understand from that uh, from that scan. Again, handheld probes uh, overlaying the results on the video, and you can see that here. So I stop the scan. We can essentially use the software feature to align everything, see exactly when where the emission is coming from. And essentially, this is the first thing that you will do. So now you can see the 120 megahertz mountain. You know exactly what's going on. And let's go back to the presentation. And again, the way to mitigate that is either to, to create some kind of a shield around the DC to DC converter and decouple that from the main, uh, there's plenty of other uh, of the of things that you you need to do, or essentially to move to what I'm going to do now is uh, using a battery to operate the same circuits. Everything is the same. So <clears throat> I'll go back to the software. So you can see that it's actually happening in live. So now I'm going to disconnect the cable and connect the uh, the USB power, and I'll power the same thing, the same board from the USB. But uh, I'll switch to the scanner so we can take a high resolution, more accurate scans, and you will see the difference. So I'm just connecting the RFID, the RF cable. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the way I uh, select or set the scanning. Uh, it's going to be a, just a regular resolution scanning. So essentially, I selected that entire area. I uh, just did it before, but that's the way to do it. You select the cable and then the RFID uh, transmission area. Here you're going to select the uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer setting from, so in this case, it's from 10 megahertz all the way to 310, uh, 30 uh, kilohertz RBW. Essentially, that will do the trick. So now I can start scanning. And we can see that it takes longer, but uh, in this RBW, uh, but again, we start scanning. Uh, first of all, we don't see the mountain that we saw here, right? Around 120, this one is gone. Remember now, this is a battery powered uh, device. Uh, and the environment, of course, is much quieter. So once you do that while it's scanning, uh, we can go back to the presentation and so we fix the problem. We took that to to a chamber and we scan again and we got that. And essentially, this is what we're going to get in the scanner as well. So we solved the main problem, which was the, which was the noise. Uh, from the DC to DC converter, but we still see two area of issues. Uh, mainly number two here, 
which we can see that it's 13 megahertz. Now we know what 13 megahertz is. It's actually the RFID, right? So, L, and we can see it very strongly here. And of course we can see that it's coming from the antenna. Uh, we know that after all, this is an RFID board. The problem is why we are getting that on the conducted emission test, right? So here you can actually see that very clearly. So the 13 megahertz signal is being generated here actually by that processor here, by this uh, board, by this board here. You can see the IC here, but the problem is that it's actually that it's actually being distributed through the cable to the main board, and that's essentially caused the failure. So this is what we see here. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is what we see here. So we do not expect to see that on the main board in this area here. So again, there are several ways to, to deal with that, mostly around the, uh, the board design. Uh, one thing is essentially decoupled this cable, the ribbon cable, the cable from the main board. You can see while the this is an interleaved scan, so the scan continues, and we can see the distribution of that specific frequency to the main board, which is undesirable uh, event. Now, uh, we fix the main thing, right? Uh, the highest point, but let's see if we have some more, more issues essentially. So let's go back to the presentation. Uh, so next thing is essentially to go to a radiated emission test. So now you connect everything up uh, before powering the system. Uh, you do the ambient test, and uh, here you can see the FM radio around the 100 megahertz. So this is not coming from from that board. Here you can see the fourth harmonic of the 13 gigahertz. Again, uh, cause us to fail, but now we know where it's coming from. This is coming from the antenna. We need to disable or decoupling the uh, the ribbon cable so it won't come to the main board and won't affect it. So that thing, uh, where's the mouse? Sorry, I lost the mouse. Uh, so that thing needs to be uh, addressed. Then we can see here the mountain of the uh, DC to DC converter. This is around 120, 125 megahertz. And then we have another area here, which is around 240, which makes sense. This is the second harmonic of the switching frequency. Is it? Uh, so if we go back to the software, uh, again, the combined scan here, uh, we have this scan here. So I'm talking about that mountain here. So again, these frequencies, I can zoom in into one of them, uh, anyone actually. Uh, and again, we can see that it's coming from the DC to DC converter. Indeed. But we have another peak here. Uh, around 240, and this is this peak here. This is essentially 244, and this is not coming from the DC to DC converter. This is another the 18th harmonic of the 13 gigahertz flowing all the way to the main board and still causing us a problem. The problem is that if you have a very high emission from something like the DC to DC converter, you will not see that. Here it's still too strong, so you, you do see that, but the assumption is if it's the switching frequency is 125 megahertz and you see something around 245, 250. The assumption is that the second harmonic of the switching frequency, but it's actually not. And it's very, very visible if we will go to uh, to the battery power. So you can definitely see the harmonics from the 13 gigahertz, from the 13 megahertz spreading around the board. Again, here the DC to DC converter noise is, is disengaged, disabled, so we don't see the mountain around the 120. Uh, and all the activity is actually visible. You can essentially turn off the uh, 3D mode, which we can select the 
cable itself here, and we can see the frequency response or all the SPI activity essentially on the ribbon cable. We see exactly what's going on. All this is very difficult to see when the DC to DC converter is engaged. You can still see that if you know the frequency of, of interest, right? But essentially the DC to DC converter will mask all the other uh, activities on the board and it will be very, very difficult to, uh, to diagnose that. Uh, obviously, uh, we will see points of failure, and then the problem is to investigate where they are coming from. So in this example, you can actually see that even uh, if you know the frequencies, and if you know how to follow that uh, or to set it in the scanner, you will be able to, to see that uh, frequency distributed across the main board. And as I showed you, uh, any questions so far? Nothing. Good. So uh, that was essentially the example that I wanted to share with you, uh, how to essentially run a scan with a scanner and with uh, the near field uh, probe kits and the integrated camera that we have. Uh, here you can see essentially the scanning, the frequency scan of both option with the DC to DC uh, converter engaged and without. And you can see the setting of, of the scan. And again, you can see the activity and how to analyze essentially the distribution of a certain frequency across your system, uh, either with a handheld probe or with the scanner itself. And that's it from my end, essentially, with the, the live demo. Um, so again, everything here was live, but I can repeat the stuff if you need to, or hand over back to Cornell. Brilliant, thank you, Yoram. Um, OK, so let's see if there's any questions. You can put it in the chat if you like. OK, so if you want to send us an email or with uh, any questions that you have, uh, please do that at um, um, inquiries at YIC Technologies and uh, we will reply to you soon. Um, I will also send the recording to you in case you missed anything and or wanted to go over something and in that case if you wanted to get back to us please do. Um, but thank you very much for your time. I hope this has give you a better understanding uh, of you know the impact that our solutions can make for your business and uh, if you need um, a further online demonstration to talk about your DUT, please feel free to ask us. So uh, thank you very much. I'll end the webinar now and um, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Thank you. Bye.
Yeah. You haven't stopped it yet. I left the meeting. Yeah, so I'm only stopping it now. Oh, 